Hi, I'm Ben Blazik. I'm a researcher at the University of Chicago and Argonne National Laboratory, and today I'm going to show you how to transfer data with Globus. So we're going to look at two key topics today. First, we're going to explore the Globus web user interface and see how you can use it in your day-to-day -day research. And then we're also going to use Globus to replicate 100 gigabytes of data from a storage endpoint at Illinois Urbana-Champaign to Argonne National Laboratory. And this time we'll use the web user interface, and next time we'll show you how to do this all with a Python script. So first, you're going to want to navigate to globus.org. You can see on this web page, they have some information about the latest capabilities that they've deployed, including Globus Flows, uh, which we will feature in the future. Uh, but if you scroll down, you can actually find this uh, fun counter, which shows you how much data has been moved by researchers using Globus. And you can see that this is about 1.58 trillion megabytes. So researchers have moved a lot of data almost 1.6 exabytes, and you can actually watch this go up uh, across the days, which is kind of fun. But to get started, you're going to want to click this login button. And once you click that, if you have already created an account, you'll be dropped into the file manager. And if you have not, you'll be guided through the user creation or authentication process. OK, so once you log in, you'll be dropped into this view where you see two panels side by side. This is really nice if you're looking to move data from one endpoint or collection to another. So what we're going to want to do is find where the data are at. And so to do that, we'll click Search in Collection. And I have some bookmarks made already, but you can also search. So if you wanted to search something like NCSA, you could do that. It'll uh, show you some endpoints or collections there. And if you want to just use your bookmarks, you could do that. In, in that case, I have a bookmark for the location here. And I am going to look for a specific set of data which is data that was collected at the advanced light source. So I'm going to navigate to that. And you can see you get this nice file view. You can see which things are folders, which things are files. You can see how big they are. You can get a link. So if you want to share this with somebody else, you can click that. It'll show you exactly how to uh, share that link with another collaborator. You click that and share that with somebody. You can set permissions, et cetera, if it's something that you control. But for now, what we want to do is actually just click into this raw folder. And so you see here, it's uh, comprised of many different files. So you can keep scrolling down, see how many files this is comprised of. Uh, but what we want to do is select about 10 of these so we can get to 100 gigabytes. I see there are some that are 10 and some that are 20. So let's select five that are 20. So we're going to do a little bit more than 100 gigabytes. And then all we need to do is find where we want to move the data to. So we're going to find data, uh, find a location on MDF Eagle. We're going to put this into a temp directory. This is a, a endpoint or collection that is sitting at the Argonne Leadership Computing Facility. And all we need to do next is click Start. So all the authentication has happened behind the scenes. My credentials are handled. That all happens when you log in with, with different, different credentials. If you need a specific credential, it will prompt you for that. So we're just going to click the Start button. And you see that this uh, pops up with some detail views. You can click if you want to see the details. We'll check that in a minute. Uh, you can also see on the left here that it shows that you have some activity going on. So that means that there's data actually starting to move between these two uh, storage endpoints. So we're going to click Activity. And you can see uh, if I click into this, what's going on is it's, it's setting up the transfer between the two endpoints. And so there are five files that are going to be moved. It's in the process of doing things like checksumming and uh, ensuring that the permissions are right and all these types of things. So you can read about uh, what types of settings we've used down here. So you can see that we're verifying the file integrity after transfer. That means that we're going to be doing a checksum on, the, uh, on both sides of the transfer to make sure that no bits or bytes have been changed. The transfer is not encrypted, so that is one of the things that you could choose. And we're overwriting files on the destination. So we're, uh, you can think about different ways that you might want to sync data between these endpoints. So you can see that this is still uh, just now starting to move data. So 26 gigabytes have been moved, uh, about 400 megabytes per second. But that's a little bit slower than you might expect because of these checksum operations, which are, are very nice uh, to have to make sure that the data ends up the same on both sides. And so we will wait a few minutes here, and we will check back in in a minute. 
Here we are checking in on the data transfer. You can see that it completed successfully. We moved 115 gigabytes of data from Champaign-Urbana up to the Argonne Leadership Computing Facility in eight minutes and 32 seconds. Also, you can see that the file integrity was verified before and after with a checksum, which is a really nice feature to have. You can recall that we used the file manager to uh, move these data. We found the data here on the left and we simply click start to begin moving the data and I just started another transfer there. Uh, so you can also see that the data are, are now available on the MDF Eagle endpoint that I, as I mentioned is available at the Argonne Leadership Computing Facility. So now you can leverage all of those great computing capabilities to perform new research tasks uh, using this data. So thank you for watching. Uh, and we will have more videos in the future, for example, uh, using a Python SDK to perform these same operations.